What's going on, everybody? My name is Dylan Nosman here at Mom's Basement MMA, and I'm joined by a very special guest today, Julius Juicebox Walker, ahead of his light heavyweight championship fight on June 1st at Synergy FC 13. How are we doing today, man? How are you feeling? Dude, I'm doing great. Uh, I appreciate you for having me on, man. Dude, absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of a stereotypical question, but uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Obviously, when I watch your fights, your wrestling jumps off the page. Was that your first start with combat sports, or uh, did you kind of find it another way? And, uh, you know, how? Yeah. When, when was that moment you knew that, like, this is it? For sure, for sure. Yeah, I um, – so growing up, I always played basketball. Um, I played mm -hmm. – college ball um, for a couple of years and I stopped playing after two years and you know I went through a summer hadn't been an athlete gained a little bit of weight and um, didn't really didn't really know what to do with myself and I had a buddy in high school that had done jujitsu so I gave that a try um, started training BJJ um, and within a couple months I was like man I should try the MMA class and then a couple more months and I was making my amateur debut from there you know I primarily a grappling gym so obviously i i wrestle a lot in a lot of my fights yeah i can see that so um obviously you talked about making your amateur debut pretty quick after uh, training you fought 10 times with amateur uh there's some mixed opinions about amateur fights in the mma community um mm -hmm. what do you think about having an extensive amateur career and how do you think that set you up for a pro career i think it's really smart for a lot of guys um obviously there's some dudes out there that you know, come in with enough pedigree to where they're probably not going to have much of an amateur career. There's a, there's there's so many levels to MMA now um, due to the growth of the sport, and there's so many people. Um, and for for guys that are just starting out, um, even with no background, you can step into the amateur cage pretty quickly. I think it's really good for development, really good for experience. Um, I'm really glad I fought amateur as long as I did. I remember being a couple years into my amateur career and thinking I was like, oh, I want to go pro now. And waited a little bit longer and i think it was definitely really good for my development mm -hmm. well i think you see international organizations like the imamaf you know a lot of guys having so many fights as an amateur you know like muhammad makayev and that ufc is one of those guys he had something yep. like 22 amateur fights but it set himself up so well with all that experience so i think it's a it's an underrated aspect of some guys careers fighting a long amateur career so throughout your career both amateur and pro you fought a little bit back and forth between light heavyweight and heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that a little bit. Where do you find, find yourself most comfortable and where do you see your most success moving forward? Yeah, um, I, I'd say that I'm probably going to be primarily in the 205 division, staying at light heavy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I took some fights at heavyweight towards the end of my amateur career. Um, like one, the, fir the first time I ever fought at heavyweight, it was just a short notice thing. Um, saw it come up and I was like, yeah, I'll fight um mm -hmm. sounded fun um mm -hmm. you know I've, I've i enjoy fighting heavyweight you know it's a good time eating eating kind of whatever you want not having to cut mm -hmm. weight but i'm definitely a 205er especially especially for the for the future of my career absolutely so um a little bit more on the technical side obviously i mentioned your wrestling earlier mm -hmm. just how much do you like picking up dudes and slamming them <laughs> dude it's it's hilarious i uh every fight i go in there and my coach is always like listen man just pull his legs out, you know, don't, there's no need to, no need to pick him up in the air. Like you're going to use a bunch of energy doing that. And then we get in there and I take that first shot and dude, it's uh, it's too much fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, it's, it's a blast to watch. And it was funny. I was watching one of your fights earlier. Um, I believe for peak fighting and yeah. you slam the guy, he gets up, he duplexes you and then yep. you get up and immediately slam him back. And I was like, what a sequence, right? Like, just again, just big boys throwing each other around. You love to see it. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously, you have a title fight coming up. Five rounds. You have gone the distance five rounds once in your career as an amateur. Once again, speaking on that experience, um, how do you feel about going five rounds? How did that fight set you up? And uh, yeah, what's kind of your mentality going into this fight regarding the distance? Um, so in in the am in Miami career, actually, I've, I they had never let us fight more than three. I had I had quite a few title fights. Um, but all the promotions, they were all only three rounders. Um, so it's actually, I'm, I'm super excited about the, the, the aspect of a five round fight, you know, um, it, it, I, I really feel like assuming this fight does go into the later rounds, um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that my, uh, my cardio is going to be able to outlast this guy. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it as a pro. I haven't even gone out of the first round yet. Um, and the, the five minute rounds, I remember coming into my pro career and 
um, being a little nervous about fighting for a full five minute round. And I guess mm-hmm. I still haven't yet. But um, as I train, but when training with the five minute rounds, I kind of like the pacing of that round a little bit better. You don't, you can, you, mm-hmm. you don't necessarily have to get in and get right to it. The amateur fights are sprints. The pro fights, you can be a little bit smarter about it. So I definitely think the five rounds could play, play into my advantage. Absolutely. Well, I personally, I'm coming off a Muay Thai fight with two minute rounds and I'll tell you, it is a yeah. blitz. I mean, there's no time to work. So I'm sure the five minutes gives you much more time to flesh out your game plan, get some reads, you know, figure exactly. out exactly how you want to approach that opponent. And obviously five rounds of it gives you all the time in the world. So uh, speaking of this fight at Synergy FC 13 in Missouri, you're taking on Niall Bartling, obviously fought on the ultimate fighter previously, um, yep. you know, six and one light heavyweight. What do you know about your opponent and uh, how do you approach tape study? Are you a tape study guy or do you more kind of just focus on your own game plan and how you're going to go into the fight? Yeah, I, I definitely watch. Um, I watched, I wa- I love to watch tape on my opponents. Um, I'll s- sit down with my coaches and watch it. Um, I, I think it's really good just because you can't necessarily um, bank everything on the tape because, you know, obviously – you know, I'm going, I'm watching my own tape and saying, trying to game. sometimes I try to game plan against myself, you know, what, what, what would, what are people going to try to do to me? Um, I, I've definitely watched quite a bit of Niles tape. He's, he's a very strong athlete. Um, he's a good wrestler. Um, when he gets on top of you, he's one of those guys, it's going to be really tough to get off. You, you, if, if he gets you down, you've got to be, as soon as your butt hits the mat, you've got to be working your way back up. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you can't let that guy get settled on top of you or it's going to be a long night. Um, he, he's, I, I walked, he had one, his last, uh, pro fight, he fought five, five minute rounds. Um, he, he lost the fight, um, by decision, but it's still one of those things I watched him even in the later rounds, even as he gets fatigued, um, when he gets that top position, if you let him settle in, he, he's really strong. So I think this fight for me, is about not letting him settle, keeping him moving, um, keeping him working. And I think I have, I think I have more ways to win, um, and a little bit more weapons than he does, even though he does have some, some really great qualities. I think that I've got, um, a a bigger bag with better tricks. Um, and I think that I'll be able to display that. Absolutely. I'd love to hear that. Um, so you mentioned your gym a little bit earlier, uh, Mm -hmm. team fusion, you said a little bit of a grappling and wrestling gym. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about your team out there. You know, what makes that gym special to you? And, uh, I'd like you to actually bring up at least one of your teammates who you say is on the rise and we should keep an eye out for as a fighter. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're we're uh, based out of Springfield, Missouri. Um, one of those places. It's a not everybody's necessarily heard of it. It's a, a big town, but a small city. Um, mm-hmm. And we we've, we've definitely got a it's a, a really growing MMA community, especially in the last few years. Since even since I've been training, I've been training for about five years. Um, my gym, I we we've definitely got high level grappling, um, good good MMA MMA based wrestling as well um and just just good guys good environment um one dude to keep an eye out for is my teammate jonathan beckett he's uh he's actually mm-hmm. fighting on lfa um that fights june 7th um okay. i believe his his opponents and other they're both they're both four and one they're 135ers um john's a beast he just got his brown belt in jujitsu um he's okay. another guy that fought amateur for a while and he, he's a guy to watch out for for sure Mm-hmm. Well, LFA is a great promotion, and obviously uh, they have a lot of good fighters there. I have a couple teammates and coaches who have uh, been in the LFA circuit, so I, I'll definitely keep an eye out for him moving sure. forward. Um, so obviously everything goes according to plan. You win coming up in a couple weeks. What does the ideal 2024 look like for you moving forward? And uh, what are kind of your ultimate goals in the sport? Is it the UFC? Is it otherwise? You know, is it kind of, you know, do you have something set in mind or is it kind of just seeing how it flows? Yeah, um, I, I definitely, you know, the, the end goal is definitely to make it to the UFC, you know, have a long and a long and good career in the UFC. Um, I want to be able to stick around there. A lot of guys get they, they're really in a rush. They want to they want to make things happen immediately. They want to come in and have that meteoric rise. And that's not necessarily everybody's path. Um, I'm definitely I'm, I'm trying to take things as one fight at a time as possible. Um, it feels like I'm taking a big step up in competition here. Um, mm-hmm. My first three pro fights, I haven't, haven't had to face a lot of adversity, and I'm taking on a tough opponent, and I think it's the direction I need to take my career in, for sure. Um, hope to, I hope to get back in there relatively quickly after the fight um, and then, and then kind of see, see where I can go from there. Um, I'm actually having a, 
having a daughter in September. It'll be my second little girl. Um, so probably will be. I appreciate you, man. Uh, probably take yeah. a little time off there, but hopefully I can get one more in after this, and then kind of see where see where the see where I'm headed. Absolutely, love to hear it, man. Sounds like a, a good plan moving forward. And um, sure. <clears throat> obviously, last but not least, uh, do you have any coaches, sponsors, teammates you'd like to shout out? And uh, I'd like to hear your prediction coming up uh, for Synergy FC 13 on June 1st. For sure, for sure. So uh, I'll shout out my sponsors really quick. Um, shout out to Specialty Family Tree. Um, great people, great, great company. I really appreciate everything they've done for me. Um, also, shout out to Bayworks, um, another another great company that's joined my team. And oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry, I'll put um, that out. You're good. I appreciate you. Um, yeah. Shout out to Bayworks. Um, they're a great company. I appreciate them a lot. Um, they've done a lot for me this camp, and I uh, I really like to express my gratitude for that. Um, and you know, obviously, shout out to my team, Team Fusion. Coach Brad Montgomery. Um, shout out to my wife, Paige. I love you. Um, couldn't definitely couldn't do this without her. She's a big part of everything. Shout out to my daughter, Rainy B. Um, mm -hmm. Rainy B, you're the best. <clears throat> and then, as far as the prediction for the fight goes, um, I see this fight ending in a knockout um, with me being the victor in the second round um, and the new baby. Let's go. I love it, man. Let's go. You know, um, I'm very excited to watch you fight coming up. I think it's going to be very exciting. And um, yeah, everybody out there, make sure to tune in. Synergy FC 13, June 1st. Um, where can we watch, if you know? Uh, it'll be on MMA Futures. Uh, MMA Futures Live is the is the web handle. Um, but yeah, that they'll be streaming it live on there. And if you're in the Kansas City area, Memorial Hall, come through. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for taking the time today to join us, Julius, and uh, yes, best of luck in your career moving forward, man. Appreciate you big time, man.